Whoa, god damn. I really found the smoking gun now. Fukushima. This boiling ocean situation. What I figured out today is that they have it throttled. They have it throttled. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, they have been talking since like last year sometime, I, I forget exactly when it was, that they were going to build... Oh, look at this. They're going to put in a seawall. They're going to put in a steel wall under construction that is to hold the groundwater from going into the ocean. Oh, gee, you know, right in the path of where the ocean needs to, to reach the, the meltdown in order for the ocean to boil. Hmm. <laughs> so they got it throttled. They got, uh, you know, some type of steel mechanism down there with a door on it that they can open it up and cause, you know, the ocean to boil for there to be this massive amount of steam uh, uh, off of the ocean there, radioactive steam, and then they can just close it up and, uh, you know, just pretend like, no, no, nothing's going on, nothing to worry, nothing to see here. But, um, I guess some more to say about this. You know, I mean, that's that's pretty much the, the basics of it. But, um, you know, this, 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 the wall plan, the wall to hold the groundwater out coming from the mountains, uh, hold it from going into the sea. Obviously, it makes absolutely no sense at all. Yeah, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist doctorate to recognize that number one, the uh, the groundwater is going to build up on the back of the wall, and that it's going to flow over the wall and around the wall. So it's not going to even prevent the contamination from going into the sea. It's just going to flow around it in a different path. Beyond that, though. It's going to cause there to be a swamp. A huge marsh is going to form under the reactor buildings. You know, it doesn't take some type of, you know, genius uh, architect to recognize that, you know, if you put this thing in the ground, it's going to cause those buildings to collapse. So why would they do it? Why would they put this steel wall in the ground you know, so that they can get underground there and start working to, to make this thing even worse. You know, they, they were looking at the fact that, you know, there's really not so many people dying, you know, maybe people are keeping up with their iodine intake, not eating the ocean food or whatever. But, um, you know, I think that they're disappointed with the results of their you know, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown. And so... You know, in order to make it more devastating, what they have done is they put this wall in place. They put a tunnel from the wall to the meltdown hole. Have a look. That'd be where, uh, you know, where they put this wall that has a door on it that they can open up the door. And then they dug a, a, a channel to where the meltdown went down through the ground. You know, just imagine there being a meltdown down through here. A, a bunch of buildings with a meltdown, and they all got this steel wall running all the way down the, the front of the buildings. And so there's probably four. You know, they dug four tunnels with doors in the front of the steel wall here that they can open up and boil the ocean off with the meltdown corium. Yeah. And that's actually why Fukushima is now a boiling ocean nuclear meltdown. And then what was TEPCO's uh, excuse for it? They were like, oh, well, uh, some of the storage tanks were leaking. And, you know, they, um, the, a little bit of the storage tanks went into the ocean. And so the ocean started boiling. What? What? Nuts. Totally nuts. So anyhow, um, what got me really thinking about this is how clear the sky is today. So it's obvious that, you know, while definitely yesterday it was a huge issue, 
that there was like a bunch of steam everywhere all the way around the planet and it could you know they could just open up those doors and just let the ocean water flow in on the on the corium just let it be steamed up and uh let it boil the ocean and uh you know they, they can make it a grand mess but um today apparently uh well actually it would have been yeah you know, for for the For the moisture in the air here in Vermont, it would have to have been five days ago that they throttled the thing down you know, for me to experience, uh, be experiencing clear skies again. Uh, five or six days It's about how long. Oh, actually, I don't know if that's to get to Vermont or just to the west coast of America. I don't know. I don't feel like figuring it out. But, um, oh yeah, back when they, uh, I don't know, they, when this thing all first happened, they were saying that, oh gee, we didn't know the ocean traveled that fast. And so, you know, you can't even trust it. You know, maybe maybe it was just three days ago or something, you know, because, uh, you know, they, they just, they, they sell everybody on BS. So, you know, if they say, well, it takes six days for, uh, you know, the atmosphere to make it from over Japan to over America, you can't just trust it. You know, you gotta sit there and watch the map for six days and see if the cloud that was over Japan makes it to America. <laughs> but, um... Yeah... I don't know, this is, uh... You know, it's obviously, um... It's good news that the thing can be throttled. It's terrible news that they put the thing in and uh you know who knows who knows what they're gonna do with it now you know probably they just keep releasing a bunch of nuclear radiation on everybody you know real slow boiling us like frogs yeah um, I don't know, this, like, the whole tank situation, it doesn't make any sense at all, because they kept on saying, we couldn't find any leaks in the tanks, but, you know, we know that they're leaking, and they're saying, like, oh, there's a little drainage ditch, and, uh, you know, somehow this boiling in the ocean, but, uh, then I saw some footage that shows that they have, like, a pile of sandbags around one of the tanks, and there's not even, uh, you know, they, they might be, like, just what the rainwater was in the thing and if you know one of these enormous tanks was leaking then it would fill these uh it was like three layers of of sandbags stacked on each other and you know it would fill that in like a day especially enough radiation coming out of the thing to boil the ocean which it wouldn't even be possible you know um just some contaminated water make the ocean boil you know, like, uh, if the water was that contaminated, why wouldn't it just burst the tank, you know, being so crazy hot that, you know, that, like, none of those tanks would, would be holding the water. But, you know, obviously, you know, the, the tanks, the water, uh, the, the tanks are secure, the water in them is not so hot that it's, um, you know, the, the, the pressure is uncontainable. And, um, yeah, they, they have a throttle on this door that they put in the ground so that they can cause the ocean to boil, to release nuclear radiation on the world. Yeah, this is, uh, this is some Rothschild treachery, Rothschild banksterism, that's who's running this, from the nuclear explosions to the harp earthquake that caused the tsunami, you know, to this underground door to to throttle the uh, to throttle the seawater and on top of the corium. It's all Rothschild treachery, you know, uh, seeking depopulation you know, for fear of being put to justice for all his murderous banksterism. Yeah, that he's got to 
throw the world into such chaos while everybody is so smart to what it is that just happened with all this bankster crime. You know, he's got to make the world such chaos that you know, everybody's just struggling to survive. You know, and then you know, what he's hoping is that he's able to make enough people dead that you know, they, they just won't even be those people to control.